bitches. You guys are listening to this shit. Oh, wait. Hold on. I'll fuck that up. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bitches? You guys are listening to Dense's Shit Show. Ah, get you down. <laughs> oh, I can't see you there. I'm Dibs. And you know what I like to do on my days off to unwind and relax? Drink balloting whiskey. Smooth, chocolatey. It's the perfect way to end my evening. Dangerously good. What's up, Hoochies? It is turned out to be a beautiful day here in Nashville, Tennessee. Am I frozen? Sorry, we're having technical issues. Can you guys hear me? Gotta love technology. Sorry, we were having technical difficulties. I mean, we got to love technology. But what's up, Hoochies? Like I was saying, it is a beautiful day here in Nashville, Tennessee. Freaking cold. Sun's out. Get your tits out. I have a special guest with me today, and I'm super excited because I know you guys know him just like I know him. Trey Lewis. What's up? What's up, darling? Nothing much. Dude, that outfit. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to bring some... uh you put your wind some <laughs> some color into the world today, you know. And there was a wind advisory. I didn't think you would bring out the whole yeah. windbreaker seat. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, I love this thing. I just got it for val look, for Valentine's Day. You look balling in it, thank dude. Thank you, thank you. I got the Jordans on. I I uh, cleaned them today, so you look swagged out. Thank you. Are thank you, you your own stylist? I'm not. I actually have a stylist, uh -huh. but my stylist didn't buy me this. I, I bought this one. I, and yeah. you were walking, and it reminded me of something. Have you ever tried to play hide and seek in a windbreaker never, outfit? Never, never. I haven't played hide and seek in years. Okay, I think you would lose. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> you, sure. For you sure. could hear Trey just like walking with the windbreaker. You know how it like shrubbles, yeah. like me wearing pleather. Just hear it. Together? Yeah, for sure. It's just different. I have like a a bunch of different jumpsuits. I ordered them all on Amazon, and then the girl I'm dating now, she bought me this for Valentine's Day. It was the I love it. I had like a terrible day. I came home and this was laid out on the bed. She was like, "Happy Valentine's Aww. Day." I was like, "You're the one." I told him to uh, do the running man, and he looked at me. He goes, "What's a running man?" Yeah, is that like, like a new thing or is that like an old? No, thing? that is like. A 90s dance move. That is my go-to move when, you know, this is how we do it. You know, the running man, Trey. Oh, yeah. I just know how to twerk. That's it. You know how to twerk? Yeah. I got to see that off camera. I'll show you. Right. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> I did it in the Dick Down in Dallas video. You did it in yeah. the Dick Down? I was just like about 30 that. seconds in. 30 seconds yeah. in. I want to see that footage. Yeah, that's I must have missed that when I watched the music video. But Trey Lewis, man, you've been doing some things, my guy, here been in Nashville, it. Tennessee. Yeah. When did Dick Down in Dallas come out? So you guys are watching. If you guys don't know who Trey Lewis is, he went very viral for Dick Down in Dallas. Yeah, real yeah. viral. Huh? Um, real, real viral. <laughs> I mean, now it's not like real viral, but I was like, Dude, it's I mean, still it great. was crazy. It's it still was crazy. A great song. Um, I moved to town in 2019. I went, um, I went through a divorce. I'm from Alabama. You were married. I was married for seven years. Yes. I had no idea. I'm an old man. I'm 36. So. I'm 30. Yeah. Damn, yeah. you got married young. Yeah, I did. It was it was a bad decision, but no, make not, a lot of those. Everything's not a bad decision. It's a lesson. Yeah, it was a lesson. I'm, I mean, I'm definitely grateful for where my life is today, but, um, you know, 
whatever. Hi, you were married? I was married. I had no mm-hmm. idea. I, I was raising somebody else's kid and everything. I was a stepdad. Damn. Yeah, that was the hardest part about the yeah. divorce, you know what I mean? Because you grow a relationship, you know, with the kid. Yeah, and, and then everything. all of a sudden, like, you know, hey, you can't see my kid anymore. Yeah. We're not together. So that's that's tough. I but, will say it's harder um, on the kid. Yeah, for sure. But, man, that's, man, we could get into some deep, deep stuff. Wow. Yeah, we could go all day on that. So after, you know, you made that decision, like, hey, it's so, not going to work. Yeah, so we get a divorce, and um, I'm just like, I, li- I lived with my mom for like three months after the divorce, and I was like, okay, well, like, I can't do this. Don't you I, just love moving back to I mama's can't. house? I feel like once you're past a certain age, you should never live with your parents again. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. my gosh. And I, 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 I love my stepdad and my, and my mom. Like, they're great. You know, me and my mom have a good relationship and everything. I just like. I just couldn't do it, you know? It's just too much. Can you imagine? And, uh, I mean, you're a full-grown adult, right? And you're back at home living on the couch. and Man. Yeah, so I tried to, like, live with my brother. And all the while, I was still... Uh, I worked at a treatment center, so I've been sober for 16 years. Some people know that. Some people don't. But, um, so I worked at the treatment center that I was a patient at once. And I worked there for six years. And I was starting to go, like, part-time. And I was like working there but i was gigging on the weekends i was playing like weddings uh frat parties corporate events frat parties yeah frat parties at, all that down stuff. here at like mtsu or oh like, like miss at, mississippi state oh, okay. florida state uh tuscaloosa like you name it you know sec schools and I um no idea about yeah. this that's amazing you've been sober for 16 years mm-hmm. that is absolutely freaking amazing thank congratulations you, thank you. if nobody's told you congratulations thank lately you. thank you that is awesome thank dude. you i appreciate it did you get sober after your divorce no i was sober i got married sober and divorced sober i got sober when i was 19 i went to rehab when i was 19 i started drinking when i was 12 and and then it just 12 like, yeah 12 well, or 13 playing with poly pockets at the age of 12 yeah yeah so it was just kind of like a ski jump my parents my mom got divorced from my from my stepdad when i was like 12 and um yeah it was just like so it hit I, you hard. I started some, yeah, it just messed me up. And I was like, from like 12 to 19, I was just, I mean, I did it all. I, you know, sold sold drugs and, you it's know, all like that stuff. like you lived a whole new life I feel at like an early age. And like now that you're 30, you know, you're yeah. you're matured. and fi- It's like you don't even know who that, what that life was. Like it was. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't definitely Holy haven't crap. forgotten, but I do feel like a cat. Like I've had like. I'm like I'm, I'm feel like I'm, I'm on my like sixth or seventh life by now. That is wild, Trey, yeah. to start drinking at twelve. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I started smoking cigarettes when I was thirteen. My yeah, daddy, we were sigging it up there for a while. My daddy handed me a pack of Durrells in the truck. You're light one up. Yeah, and, but I quit smoking cigarettes when I was twenty six. Yeah, I'm off cigs now too. I'm off cigs. I quit the vape. You quit vaping? I'm on Zen, though. Like, I got one in right now. I sleep with them in. So, I'm only two weeks off the vape. I could never quit vaping. I'm going to be honest with you guys right now. I love it too much. I just saw, like, some TikTok video, though. They were like... Don't freak me out. <laughs> okay, I won't. We won't go did, there. Did she end up in the hospital? Um, No, no. She didn't end up in the hospital. They just talked about, like, you want me to keep going or no? Huh. They said there's, like, some oil that gets in your lungs and then it just stays there. Oh. Yeah. Well, I've been in the hospital a few times from smoking and vaping. That yeah. shit's not fun. Feels really? like an elephant sitting on your chest. Oh yeah, you can't breathe. Nice. Oh yeah, and the doctor literally looked at me. He goes, "If you don't quit this shit, you're gonna die." Rip it, girl. Yeah, but uh, anyway, I, so anyways. <laughs> um, not to go too far into the addiction stuff because I could talk all day about that. But I got sober. Um, I went to, I lived in a halfway house for six months. I got sober. I moved in with my dad and it's, it's been quite a journey, uh, you know, being sober for 16 years. I've been, had a lot of ups and downs, but anyway, so I go through the divorce. I live with my mom for a little while. On the couch. On the couch. No, I had my own room. Oh, really? I had to sleep on the couch. (laughs) And then, um, yeah, I know. I listen to your podcast with, uh, on, yeah, um, (laughs) But anyways, so I live at my mom's for six months. Then I decided to move in with my brother. I lived with him for like three months. And then I moved in with my best friend, um, Frankie. And uh, I lived with him. But I remember sitting on his couch one day and I was like, dude, I'm I'm 30. Like, I got to like 
I got to like see, I'm playing cover gigs, I'm playing weddings, I'm doing all this stuff, I'm putting out some music here and there. But, like, I got to move to Nashville because I can't wake up when I'm 50 and be like. But what well, state were you in when, like, where were you living at? Like, you're saying you got to move to Nashville. Where were you at? I was in Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah, where Alabama. I'm from. And I was like, I just, I was like, dude, I just got to move to Nashville, like, just to know that I tried. Right. That I tried every avenue I could to take this music thing as far as I could. And, uh. That when you came out with so the- January second of twenty nineteen, I loaded my car up of everything I had. I had a mattress in a box, like you know, one of those that you once you take it out of the plastic, it, it like rises Expands. up. Yeah. So I had that, a TV dinner tray, my <laughs> Xbox, a TV that I bought off like Craigslist or something, and a, a Rubbermaid underwear drawer for my nightstand and for my underwear. That's all a man needs. And a, Yeah, a couple of different changes of clothes. And I moved up here, and I rented a room for a guy uh, for six months. I still have the picture of the mattress on the floor. You know, everybody that. has those stories that come to – you know, most people that come to Nashville have the mattress, the on, mattress the floor, on the floor. mattress on the floor. Floor story. But, um, yeah, so I lived there for um, six months and was just, like, going around meeting people and stuff like that. But I will tell you, this is, like – was, like, a defining moment for me. I walked into – um. Uh, what is the name of that bar over there? Uh, the local. The local. Yeah, it was like you know what I'm talking about I on think West End. So. Yeah, I walk in there. It's like my first night there, or second night in town. I walk in, a Russell Sutton. He's a songwriter here in town. He's playing my boy. You remember the LV Shane mm-hmm. song? And like, I'll just never forget. I got in my car and I just like cried the whole way home because oh, it was like Trey. that. W- it was like that was my life, but now mm-hmm. I'm here. Like, oh shit, I'm really here. And there was like, take so, it all in. There were so many nights where, like, when I first moved to town, it was like, what am I even doing here? You know, because I would go out to the bar, and I'm, you know, like. In country music, drinking is like permitted. Like you have to do. No, it, you it's know? not. I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's like it's almost part though. of the lifestyle. I think yeah. it's like what people, you know, the persona of yeah. it. But you'd be amazed, like. But today. it's like you move here and you like don't really have any. I moved here and I don't. I didn't really have any friends. But like, I, I always say like everything builds off the next. Like when I first started going to twelve step meetings, like you know, to get sober. I would sit in the back of the meeting, and if anybody was, like, coming towards me, I would, like, pick up my phone and pretend to be on it because I didn't want to talk to anybody. You have social you know? anxiety, Trey. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, but as I, like, stayed there and kept coming back and, like, did the things to stay sober, I, like, felt like I earned my place there, you mm-hmm. know. And and, and I, public speaking used to freak me out. And now like, I'll talk to anybody. Look at you here at Hooch um, just telling yeah, your story. Yeah, and Give then, yourself some credit. So, like, I would walk into these bars and I would, like, meet people and, like, past midnight, you know, it's like I would say something to somebody and they'd be like, oh, yeah, slam, 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 you know, and I'd be like, okay, this is my cue to leave. Like, this is What do you mean, sure, sure, you know, sure? just kind of be, like, drunk, you know? Like, oh, it'd be wait, like, I was going to ask it, you. It'd, it'd be like the tenth time I would meet them, you know what I mean? <laughs> and they didn't remember <laughs> yeah. you. But there was just so many nights, like I was like, "What am I doing here?" But I just kept going back and kept meeting people. And then I met Matt McKinney um, at uh, Mac McKinney. Matt McKinney. He wrote Dick Down in Dallas. Okay. I met him at um, at Revival at Tin Roof one night, which Good old actually, tin roof. Which, which actually, I met him. Um, in Auburn a few years ago, I was playing at Sky Bar in Auburn, and I was uh, on stage singing Big Green Tractor, but I changed the words to take you for a ride on my big tally whacker. And he came up to me that night, and he was oh, like, uh, he's wait, like, wait, can you sing me a little verse of that? Take for a ride on my big tally whacker. We can go slow, make it go faster. That's kind of, yeah, I it mean, kind of fits, dude. That song's kind of, you know, sexual. Okay. Anyway, so I'm gonna say um, that next time when I see my man, I'll be like, I'll "Take you for but a ride." Like playing playing covers for years, like I always did Change that up the lyrics just to have fun. fun. But he came up to me that night and he was like, "Hey, man, my name's Matt. Good job. That was hilarious." So like, I'm in town. It's like my second week here, and he comes up to me at Revival. And he's like, "Hey, man, I'm Matt. I met you in Auburn mm-hmm. a few years ago. Like, nice to meet you." And then me and him become instant friends. We're hanging out. I mean, he's my best friend here in town. We talk every day on the phone, and um, but we start hanging out, like playing Madden at each other's houses. And make a long story short, one night 
He plays me this song he wrote called Dick Down in Dallas. Oh, so I'm thinking you had a girlfriend that got Dick Down in Dallas. No, no. It's this song. Then, oh, my God. This song is just a total <laughs> joke. Um, okay. I thought some girl broke your heart. Yeah, like, I feel like I feel like what? every every time I, every time, like, somebody at a show, like, when I'm doing the meet and greet afterwards, they're like, who hurt you? Like, yeah, tell we'll us the story. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, man, honestly, it was just a joke between friends. And it like, no, you should run. And the it story became this it. thing. And, and then that's how I'm like, I'm sorry. I know it's kind of underwhelming, but really the coolest thing about Dick down in Dallas is what it did for our, our mm-hmm. friend group. And like, so I meet Matt McKinney in Auburn. Then we run into each other. We become friends. We start hanging out. He shows me this song. I don't think anything of it. The first house I lived in, I move out and I move into a house with Mitchell Wallace, Ella Langley, and uh, Clay Barker. Oh, I love Ella Langley. Yeah, me and Ella have lived together for four years now. It's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we're in this house, and uh, we're just like having get-togethers and stuff. It's COVID. The world's shut down. Oh, so you had some company when COVID shut down. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. We're just, yeah, we're we're all like... Hanging out at each other's houses, just having big super spreaders, you know. <laughs> just, My publicist is probably freaking out over there with me saying that. <laughs> you weren't allowed to be around anybody during COVID, Trey. Well, we did for like the first month, you know. And then after that, we were like, <laughs> screw this. We got to hang out with people. Yeah. So by then, it like becomes this like bonfire thing. And we're just like playing around all our friends. And uh, one day, we went to Chili's to eat lunch. And Good Mitch. T- I'm going to take you somewhere real nice. Yeah. <laughs> Chili. <laughs> uh, what do they got that like two where you can get two things and get something else free? I don't know. Yeah, the two for four. Yeah, two for four. <laughs> so, anyways, we get that and uh, we're driving back. We should put this song out. If this song was on iTunes. I'd spend a dollar and buy it. And then Aww. I go back to the house. I go back in my room. And I'm like, you know, man, I've been putting out music since 2013. That probably my mom and my grandmother have listened to, you know, <laughs> and maybe a few thing. And and uh, Mitch is like, well, there's also this app called TikTok, and you should download it. But it was not TikTok; it was Musically. I, I think at the time, no, in COVID, no, it was TikTok. It was TikTok. Yeah, it was TikTok. Never mind. He was like, he was like, you should download this app called TikTok. Everybody's using it, and Mitch has always been like. He's, like, always loves, like, Gary V, like, Scooter Braun. Like, he's just, like, big creative guy like that, you know, uh, kind of content stuff. And he's like, you should download this app. And I did. He actually made my TikTok for me. I didn't even know but you, what really happens. I play a writer's round over here at Live Oak, mm-hmm. like, right when they started letting people have rounds and stuff. You had to sit down the whole time. Yeah. Uh, trust me. I got you know? yelled at during COVID times. Like, yeah. I was trying to like shake that thing. Like, if you're walking thing. around, you had to have your mask on, but then you had to sit down. It I was, was trying to shake my thing on Broadway. You know how many times I got yelled at by a security I guy? Bet, I bet. I sit bet. Sit your ass down. Um, Wild fucking times. So, uh... I played the song at the round and the whole bar singing it because it's all of our friends, you know, Mm -hmm. and everybody knows it. Nikki T from Raised Rowdy takes a video. It ends up on um, Raised Rowdy's uh, Facebook from the Facebook group. So that was like Facebook. So that was like the first viral part of it. Like actual Caller Daddy. Yeah, like, like the, yeah, they have like a Facebook group. Oh, okay. And they I was like thinking it was it, actually like Call Her Daddy. I was like, what? Well, yeah, they have like a Facebook group. I guess That's it's so like cool. for like a fan page or something. So it got put in there. And then um, we're just like, okay, well, this is viral. Obviously, we got to go record it. And we go to, um, we're like, I'm like, okay, how do we do this? Do we do this like acoustic or like how do we do it? And Grady Saxman at Saxman Studios sends me a text and all it says is dick down in dallas which he's played on everything that i've done since 2012 and i called my producer and i was like dude we gotta do it we're going to great east we're going to track this thing and it was just grady saxman on drums saw on guitar it was very it was the cheapest probably recording that i've ever done but this um, was like the start of like the rise right of trey lewis of people yeah, hearing your yeah. music and everything yeah so like i put the video on tiktok before an acoustic gig it was like a four-hour acoustic gig by the time i got done with the gig i had uh four million views that's wild yeah we put the song up for pre-save and it came out december 1st and uh it beat out bts that week in sales, it was a Billboard number one for that. Um, 
yeah. And then all of a sudden, like my life changes. I'm going on Bam. tour. Um, I'm taking label meetings with everybody. All my friends signed publishing deals. Um, I signed a publishing deal. Congratulations. It was crazy. I ended up staying independent and not signing a record deal at the time. Oh, okay. I just, I knew that song um, wouldn't go to radio. So I was like, I'm just going to own this How do you know thing. it wouldn't go to radio? I mean, I mean, there's some things on the radio. How are you going to well, tell me that song wouldn't go on I'm radio? I'm just saying it because I, I, you know, this is the way I see it. You know, I grew up listening to burnt CDs. I don't know about you, but yes, we were you know. just talking about this. I was like, oh, "Man, I wish I still had my laptop. I would so make my crush right now." Yeah, a CD, and yeah. write like all like with a sharpie. And, Limewire yeah, like, days, you yeah, know. Limewire, I thought I was gonna go to jail. You illegally download it from Limewire, and then you got Bill Clinton on there. But I you did got not like, have. You know, you got like Three Six Mafia on there, and then the next track is like Leonard Skinner. You okay. know. And then the next track is like some 90s country, you know? Like, you just have a mix of, like, Very songs diverse. you just like. You know what I mean? Did but it's different hear? genres. And that's how I see myself. I'm a burnt CD, you know? Did you? Oh, I love that. Yeah. That should be a t-shirt. I'm a burnt CD. Yeah. I'm, I'm already writing it for my next record. Oh, know? okay. Nobody take that. Yeah. Nobody, nobody take that. that. But when, a LimeWire days, did you ever hear Bill Clinton on the... When you try to download a song, uh. and it would be Bill Clinton. I did not have... Sexual relations with that woman. (laughs) You did hear it. You did hear it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So after you did, like, you know, your life just seemed like it just changed for you, like, sporadically, just like that almost overnight, honestly. Yeah. And then you've just been putting out um, music ever since then. You had Always You come out. Mm -hmm. And then you recently just put out a new EP. Yeah. Yeah. uh, So... What There's four songs out, and then the sounds album. Sounds like money to me. Ching, ching, baby. Can't have money. That's right. That's right. Do I look like I have money? Yeah. Because I'm broke as fuck. Everybody knows you got money. I am now I'm like, I do not have money. You see the Amazon boots? That's all good. Yeah. 30 bucks. Just because you got money doesn't mean you got to spend it. You know no, what I mean? I know. My Nana always tells me that, but I'm like, woo, I got money. Let's go on vacay. You know, if you can put gas in your car and not worry about your tank, you know, like, I worry about your account being overdrawn, then you're doing <laughs> you're pretty good. You're living life, darling. You know? <laughs> if you can order whatever you want at any given time on Amazon, you know, if, you're ho- if your front door looks like Christmas, <laughs> then you're good. You know, you're oh set. Oh, my God, those days of overdrafting my account, uh, just like, screw it, I need gas in my car, I don't care. I'll take yeah. that overdraft charge. You never forget. You would just pray at the pump that it'll let you do. Yeah. <laughs> Not to say the decline. Yeah. <laughs> but show me the money. So you recently just put out this EP. Well, I put out like, I'm, well, it's actually a record. It comes out Friday, March This 1st. Friday? Yeah, this Friday. But, so, uh, but there's like, yeah, uh, there's like three or four songs. We put them out as singles. Five. Yeah, five. Is it five or six? It's okay, five. it's five. Cool. There's five. And that's five, yeah. On the EP. Yeah. Yeah, mm. but so you have a new record, like a whole record coming out. Whole this record, Friday. fourteen songs. Uh, I've been working on it for I guess the last I guess the last year and a half. Can you tell us the name of it? Troublemaker. Troublemaker. Yeah. Oh, that's why this PR yeah. box. If so if everybody, thank you guys so much for tuning in and just cutting the BS with me and Trey. I know you guys are probably. That's why the box says Troublemaker. Right. Right. Yeah. Show Wonder, it. Bust it open. Can I, since we're already And all those about pictures are actually uh, pictures from the music video. That, the top corner, top right corner is little me. And then that's my best friend, Frankie, that I was talking about I earlier. Sign yeah, of course. I don't want to keep it. Who's that guy running? That's little me. That's little you? Yeah, he played me in the video. Every time I, every time I watch the video, t- I literally get You've tears always in been my tall? Eyes. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Were you like that kid in elementary school where you had to sit in the back, like stand in the back on photos? Because um, you were like yeah, above yeah. everybody's of course. height. You of know course. what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's like my daughter. She looks like she's going to be almost like six. I feel like she's going to be tall as heck. And all these little How kids. How tall are you? You're not very short. No, I'm fi- I'm five two. Yeah. I got boots on, on but up there. her, you know. High heels. In my red high heels. Yeah, but she's going to be tall. But anyway, she's always in the back of the photos. 
She's a, she looks like she's like in uh, fifth grade. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open it since we're just talking about it. Open it up. I was going to yeah. wait. So this is Trey Lewis for his new album that is coming out this Friday. That's named right. Troublemaker. You keep staring at my forehead. Do I look like Lloyd Christmas? Your bangs Christmas? look great. I was telling him, I was like, my bangs look like Lloyd Christmas. I'm so scared. Wait. No, your bangs look great. And Try I wouldn't tell them. you that. If I thought your hair looked bad, I wouldn't say anything. You wouldn't say anything? Yeah. You would just keep. I'll just keep it to myself. Okay. I don't like to lie. I like to tell the truth. (laughs) So so if you're wanting something uh, and you ask Trey a question and he doesn't answer you, it looks bad. Yeah, it looks bad. All right. We're going to. Okay. Let me get situated here. Try not to break the mic. Yeah. Is it in the. Friends, I hope you enjoy this box we created filled with items to turn you into a ver- your very own troublemaker. Darling, I don't know if you know this. I already know. But I'm already a damn troublemaker. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm already, I, no, see, I should have wrote you your own separate note. Everybody's like, oh, cool, little note. What else we got in here? <laughs> no, I mean, I can read the whole thing, but the first one is like, we want to turn you into your own troublemaker. And I'm like. Oh. I don't need any help there. I mean, I'm a good time. I like to say I'm a good time, okay? You're going to, it's a good time. For you guys don't know, me and Trey have hung out but outside of Hooch, okay? He knows I'm a good time. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. For those of you who have been supporting me for the years, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Did you write this yourself? We did, yes. Uh, we did? So not just you. <laughs> well, I wrote it and then. Well, I caught that. <laughs> I wrote it, and then they, you know, kind of helped me look good because I'm I don't know English. Oh my and God, stuff. I get anxiety when I read things out loud. It's like when you're in English class and it gets to your turn to read the full paragraph. I didn't have time to practice this. You're good. You're good. Your support <laughs> and the love that you've shown from for my music is truly humbling. Your team wrote this. I said I wrote it, and then they <laughs> they tweaked it, and they tweaked it to make me look good. That's what you're supposed to, that's what a team does. <laughs> yeah. If you're new to me and my music, I would love for you to take a listen. This record is the perfect product of a lot of hard work and ter- termination. Guys, I'm going to be really honest, and I've been saying this on like for years. I suck at reading and spelling, okay? Trey, I'm going to read this in my personal time later. Okay, you're good. But yeah, you don't have to. This is, shut up, is this a vinyl? That's it. And it's signed, baby. Underneath the plastic. How did you know I listen to vinyls? I didn't know you every, did. Every morning. Every morning. I got some Patsy Cline or Bob Marley to get my... Yeah. I, like, take it. Open up the windows. Stop. I... Th- wait, this is... This is the new record. That's the new record. Okay. Before it's sure, out. I'm going to make sure nobody's listening when I'm playing this. Oh, it's fine. We need to leak my music. Yeah, we, need. we need to start some trouble. <laughs> hey, I have, yeah. I have an idea if you want to leak it. Really. Yeah. I got, uh, that is so cool. Am I Thank the first you. person to get this? Um, or am I just first, the first person, person on camera? <laughs> <laughs> or am I the first person to open up a PR box in front of you? Your uh, box. No, we've been doing it all week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's still pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Oh awesome. my gosh! Okay, but so there's only one dimps. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's only one dimps. Oh yeah, one yeah. dimps. Of course, there's only one of me. That's right. Uh huh. Oh my god! And it says River House. I love it. Oh, I know what we're doing tonight. With the are these candy cigarettes? Candy cigarettes. I know. This has to be the. I want. I don't want to mess it up because this is such a cute. The tension uh, slips. Oh my god! Note, is this a, cushion with my logo on you it? You shut your fucking. <laughs> You should Let's squeeze it I mean if we're gonna do it I gotta sit Let's on it Let's squeeze it Come on I'm gonna sit on it Alright try it Some I saw somebody do it the other day And broke right in front of me I was like oh god <laughs> Wait, somebody Wish we would've it. got a better whoopee cushion For the box <laughs> Sorry. Party Sorry Alright so I'm gonna act like You know Let me see if this really works And if it's a shitty whoopee okay, cushion I, I already gave you Pretty warning <laughs> It's a shitty whoopee cushion. It sounded like a... <laughs> it's like one of those that go between your legs. Silent but deadly. Yeah, it's like one of those that go between your legs and up the creases. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hold on, let me just do it. Again. <laughs> 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 Hold on. 
That was a good one. A little more force. There we go. I saw some like dust. Damn studied. <laughs> okay, so we have a whoopee cushion. That's like a, one of those fidget things. A little you just fidget with it, you know? It's for ADD people like me. Uh-huh. And you. Sam, I'm unmedicated. Having fun? I'm unmedicated, too. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Can you guys hear that? Oh, no. oh yeah, I, so I got your hat. Paul You're Paul's really- hat. So I started a, a hat company with two of my friends. It's called Paul Paul's Hats. It's to honor my grandfather. He was my Paul Paul. He, was, he taught me how to fish, and uh, so that's why we have the bait and tackle that I have on now. Paul Paul's Record Shop. Yeah, so we made a record shop. Oh, my gosh. Yep. You know I love hats, right? Yeah. Like, I love hats. I'm so excited to wear this. Trey Lewis. Okay, mm-hmm. what else do we got in here? I th- where's those candy like cigarettes? I'm going to chew on these. Okay, and what is this? That's like a, uh, they call them a garner. Is that what they call them? G- gator? But I call them COVID mask, you know. Or you could like put it on Rob Bank, you know what I mean? Then they'll come looking for me, you know. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> she was wearing a Trey Lewis. Trey Lewis. Get him. Oh, my God. This is, wow, the material. It's a nice. Oh, my God. I'm going to send you like a little video and everything. I love a good I love a good cigarette. It's been a hell of a year. It's been a it's been a hell of a year. So now that you have your new record coming out. Yeah. Is the dog in the way? I like the dog in the shot. I don't go with it. Or soon. Yeah, we leave. I'm going to Fort Lauderdale this weekend. I'm oh, doing the You're the, going to the beach? I'm going to doing the rib roundup with uh um uh, Dylan Marlowe and Dylan Marlowe, a couple of other a couple of other artists. That's going to be awesome. And then uh, the Troublemaker start tour starts uh, the week after that. And then we're going to be at, like Clemson. We're going to my hometown in, in Alabama, uh, in Birmingham. I'm doing a, um, I did. A, I'm doing an event with a, a company called keystone club and they like help people get sober and stuff so i like partnered with them it's something that's like near and dear to my heart and it's in my hometown so it's really cool and then we're just uh doing a bunch of headlining dates for the rest of the year it's gonna be awesome you got a pretty busy year it's been cool i um you know back in uh june last year i wrote a song and uh cole swindell cut it it's called three feet tall it's about my parents getting divorced and they're playing it on the highway now and that's amazing. Um, I wrote a song that I wrote a song that Tracy Lawrence just put out. So Tracy Lawrence, okay. It's cool to have some like other validation. Like I know that I'm more than Dick Down in Dallas and my friends know that and the people mm-hmm. that know my music know that, but it's really cool to have like you mm-hmm. know, your heroes and people that you listen to hear your songs that or hear they've heard my songs that I've written and thought that they were good enough for them. You so know in what the I mean? past year, did you feel like more of like a validation? Yeah, like, hey, I'm yeah, getting- from like a Nashville standpoint yeah. where I'm not mm-hmm. like this like TikToker. You know, yeah, well, I don't co- I don't care. I mean, t- TikTok's cool, you know. Like it changed my life. So, um, but like I don't know. I'm just like I'm, I I love Dick Down in Dallas. Like it's a part of who I am, and it always will be. Um, I believe that I am a troublemaker. Like from like my using and drinking days until now of kind of breaking the rule that song kind of broke the rules of country music you know yeah. and i will always like i'll always be a hard on my sleeve kind of guy and i'll always hard on my like sleeve kind of guy i'll always say you know i'll always say what's on my mind you know and um but it's it's really cool to like you know when sony signed me to a publishing deal like of awesome people that believe in me and like show mm-hmm. up and uh you know, about to go on go tour. to battle for me yeah it's, it's really cool hey how many missouri very soon is there more uh i can't remember the name mm-hmm. of the place uh my tour dates are on my website treylewismusic.com or the link in my bio you know how they say these days i don't know why like before we i knew you and started hanging out with you i thought you who's it I thought it was you. I'm single like the. That was yeah. Yeah. What song is that? Yeah. So that was um. I'm single so, like the middle finger up in the sky. Yeah. What man did I break up with? And I was using that. Yeah. I um, use that sound on TikTok. Yeah, that was say, Trey, You had like another before um, after. And it, it it is a song that in the live show when we play it, like the whole crowd knows it. Do they know? all put their middle? fingers Oh yeah, up in there? we have foam middle fingers. I'll send you one of those if you want one. <laughs> why didn't I get one? Um, I don't know why I didn't bring you one. Um, 
But yeah, that was crazy. When I wrote that song, uh, the girl that like I wrote that song about, we were actually getting back together. So it was like it was it <laughs> was it was a crazy time. But awkward. Um, <laughs> yeah, so what's up, Arian? Uh, Arian. Arian said, "What made you want to start music? What made me want to start music? All right, so like I said, I got sober in two thousand seven. And uh, I remember I always grew up singing and with my uncles, my mom, my mom had a big elaborate karaoke machine, still does. I think all our mamas did if you're a 90s Um, kid. And then so when I went to rehab, I remember I was sitting on the back uh, patio smoking a cigarette my first night. And I was just like, God, I can't believe I've done this. I've really checked myself into rehab. But I sang, there's a song by Jake Owen. It's called Starting With Me. It was like his first yeah. song. And I remember smoking my cig that night and being like, man, if I can get sober, I'm going to buy a guitar and I'm going to teach myself how to play it. And I, um, I get sober and I work at a smoothie shop. You worked at a smoothie shop? Yeah, called Tropical Smoothie. Oh, I can't see you working at a smoothie yeah, shop. Yeah, I worked there for three years until they closed down. Do you want to add protein today, ma'am? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get you some whey. I still remember. I go to the one by my house all the time, and I know I know all the ingredients and everything. i got to put these away. I'm going to eat the whole box. You're good. Uh, but, yeah, so I, I took pay, my paycheck, and my grandfather paid for half, and I went to um, – Guitar Center, and I bought a guitar. And, and you just started learning. Been playing ever since, yeah. And, 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 and. I have seen you. I always play. say country music saved my life, and Aww. that's the truth. Well, you have a, I didn't know you had this story behind you, and it was absolutely, like, it's amazing to hear it today on Hitch. I had no idea that you, I knew you were sober, but I didn't mm-hmm. know the severity of why you got sober, how you came to Nashville. So, like, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Like, I look at you totally different like when you walk out of here at hooch today it's like well, holy you. shit dude like, you got an amazing that's, that's story that's the goal you. you know yeah we're trying to show people the other parts of the onion you know yeah you don't need to just you know you can have fun in country Take down Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> did you really- see the video i made the uh the trend i'm trey lewis of course you know you know how people are doing that yeah yeah, like, yeah. I did. Of course, I'm, tra- I'm I'm Trey Lewis. Of course, people call me Dick Down in Dallas and not Trey Lewis. Hey, you're the Dick Down in Dallas guy. Yeah, like the you're other night, like literally, I was walking on the sidewalk on Demumbrian, oh, and shit. I like go past this guy, and he goes, "That's the Dick Down in Dallas guy." To his friend, I was like, "Dude, I'm right here. I have a name. Like we can shake hands. Like it, you know." It's like, and, it, and if you never heard that song or anything, it sounds pretty. Like, well, what do you mean he got Dick Down in Dallas? You know what I mean? If you, yeah. They don't know that you have a song that's called that. Yeah. Anything. Maybe he did. Mm-hmm. You know? Are you- All right. So, Grayson Grit asks, uh, what is your favorite song that you have written? Dick Down out? In Dallas. Does it have to be out, or no. what do you think? No. Um, I wrote a song the other day, like literally last week, with um, Lindsey Rhymes and James McNair, and it's called Bottom of the Bottle. And, Ooh. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a song about me getting sober. Like I just wrote it, so I'm really high high on that one right now. But if I have to choose a song that's uh, on this not album? out or on this album, it is a uh, troublemaker without a doubt. I love that song. There's so many cool things I could talk about for hours of just like God winks of like God God saying you got to put this song out. So um, I'm so excited yeah. to play this when I get home. So, you know, I can't thank you enough for just coming on Hooch and just cutting the bullshit with me. I mean, dude, you're swagged out in that outfit. I mean, I, mean, I, want, I, I was like, s- I'm going with dimps today. I, got, I was like, I could <laughs> just go cowboy and like wear like what I normally wear. <laughs> Or, like, I could be comfortable, hide the fat, and wear my Nike. You go dance. Is that dance? Yeah. Like, go comfortable, hide yeah. the fat, and wear No, I just figured, you know, there's something the bright. Chub. You know? Hide the mom job. That's why I got this big biker jacket on. <laughs> I feel like me and you ma- kind of match today and everything with our energy cool, for uh, sure. Energy. Yeah, but yeah. our outfits too, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Our outfits. But no, I just can't think enough for just coming on hooch and just cutting the bullshit. I'm just amazed at your story. And I'm so happy that everybody that's watching got to hear this today live on yeah, hooch. Yeah, it's awesome. 
Yeah. I didn't know we were going to be live. I was like, oh, you didn't oh know? we're really going to be live. Yeah, I was That's them. why I was like over here being quiet when you were like, doing, I was like, I don't want to like, <laughs> I don't want to give it away that I'm here yet or, you know. No, you could. You know. Okay. Cool. It, it's huge. You can. No do, rules, right? There's no rules at freaking the Wild huge. Wild West. Yeah. So I have to ask, what do you do on your downtime? Because I'm very into, you I mean, you're sober. And I mean, other than writing music and all that, what are we doing on our downtime? Um, I do a lot of bass fishing. I love bass fishing. Okay. Um, but uh, it's been really cold. So back in all, uh, July, I went through a breakup, and I was like, this is the one where I get it together. Like, mm-hmm. we're not doing the back and forth thing anymore, and I started buying puzzles on Amazon. Shut the fuck up. And I, I'm into puzzles now. Right now, I'm doing a 2,000-piece puzzle. And it's like, <laughs> what? I know I'm like a retired a old man. Puzzle? Yeah, I'm doing puzzles now. I'm and you're so, ADHD, I'm medicated, and you I love you it. could sit there for a puzzle. Not I love me. It. I would take it and be like, screw that. Yeah, I mean the one I'm doing right now is two thousand pieces. I bought this Am- I Wait, bought this uh-huh. table on Amazon. It's got slide out drawers. Is uh, it sitting at home right now? Where yeah, it's amazing. It's like it's like halfway done. Can you send me a picture of I it will. later? I will. Is it cats? Um, no, it's, um, it's like a mountain. It has like of course it's a lot a of different colors, bicycles, um, a river them? and a waterfall. Yeah. I frame them all. Are they just around? I have a bird puzzle in my, on my, in my podcast studio in the <laughs> background. It's the first one I did. I didn't take you to be a puzzle guy, but here we are trailers. Yeah, I never took myself to be a puzzle guy, but that's now what I'm, I'm trying doing. to think if I have anything interesting. I got into cold plunging. I've been doing that. Have you done that yet? Hell no. That would be great content. Dude. Hell no. I would not do a cold plunge. I would love to see, see you in a, in a cold plunge. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I've been working out. I'll be screaming out of that thing, thing. where's my vape? (laughs) (laughs) Do you have a cold plunge at your house? I do have one at my house. All right, so check it. I'm going to come over. We'll film it. All right. I'll try the cold plunge. It'll be worth it. It's amazing. We can go to the, there's a place here in Nashville. There's a a place here in Nashville. It's called Urban Urban Sweat. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, sauna pods. They have like uh, infrared light. I did that yesterday. That was really cool. Okay. Then, you know who, what I mean? Who is Trey looking in the mirror? Who do you want to be? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just try to... Wellness I try to, and puzzles. Yeah, I All just right. try to, like, uh, like uh, just try to, like, make myself better, you know, in all forms. I'm trying to think what I do on the side that would be intriguing. I like your TikTok lives. I wish you would do that more. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure people over here would agree with me, too. Wait, 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 wait. My TikTok live. I love it. you're in there just doing your makeup, blaring the music. I mean, in there dropping galaxies. You really? Know I mean? I've never yeah. seen you drop a galaxy. I have. Don't lie to these people. I have. I have. Do not lie to these I people. I have dropped a galaxy. I have dropped one galaxy. I've dropped more than one. <laughs> have you ever seen me go live with like um? So you, you have you ever seen the website Omega? You know where you go live with random strangers? No. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember okay, that. that's what I do on TikTok. I'll get okay. like some random person and i'll start um you know singing into them or I'll have you get, had like, like the weird ones where like they yeah. come in and they're like asking people for money they're like in a wheelchair and like fake have you ever had one like that i don't that? battle on tiktok okay. i'm yeah. just on there to make people laugh and smile because yeah. it makes me feel good and yeah that. but man that shit's funny yeah shit's yeah we love your lives <laughs> oh well, Trey, thanks dude. yeah i didn't know now i'm gonna be on the lookout to see if your fucking name pops up well you gotta watch out i got like 10 fake accounts on there so, really yeah. you imposters get alive i did just start a spam account it's called trey lewis spam oh okay yeah everybody go follow on tiktok yeah but i haven't i only posted one video on there mm. i'm just it's like a it's like a new side project i'm thinking about doing <laughs> But I did make a fake email and a, and a fake. What are we doing, Trey Lewis? You know, you know, I just have all kinds of ideas all the time. And, and like, sometimes I go through with them and sometimes I don't. So, are you into rom-coms? Yes, of course. Did you just see that new movie that just came out that has a... Finish the lyric for me. Feel the rain on your... Uh, skin? Face? I don't know. Skin was right, but finish the whole. Da, na, 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 na. Only you can let it in. No one else. No one else. Trey. <laughs> really? Speak was, the words on your lips. 
I thought we were going to do like Keep Bleeding in Love, Leona oh, some, Lewis. Okay, Leona Lewis? Yeah. Okay, get you some. I'm learning a you know lot about song? you, dude. Yes. Uh, I absolutely, uh, how does that song go? Bleed in Love? I keep bleeding, I keep, keep bleeding in love. Keep bleeding, I keep, keep bleeding Hitting them high notes. Love. Get you some. <laughs> I love that every dude in this house right now is singing Bleeding Love. Like, I, what in the heck is happening? <laughs> Kiss by a Rose, Seal. Oh, you know? that Name song a better song. No. I'll wait. Kiss from a Rose? Yeah. That song oh, ruined me, No, shh, shh, shh. You don't like that one? Oh, my God. Struck a wrong chord there. It's like trauma coming back. <laughs> Batman Returns. I mm. literally found something that I shouldn't found. And there, that song was playing in or the like background. Mambo number five, banger. <laughs> Little bit of Jessica on our lawn. What the heck? You ever heard that one? It's a good one. Yeah, I think I, the first time I heard that song, I was on a Disney cruise. And they were blasting it. Heater, why are we singing songs again? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to hear you hit that high note, dude. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Well, I can't thank you enough for just coming on Hooch and just cutting the bullshit with me, dude. Thanks for having me. It's a blast. Yeah, and I'm excited to see, you know, your new album drops this Friday, uh, Troublemaker. Uh, everybody, please, can they go Go pre-save, pre-save it. it. Link in the bio. Yeah, pre-save, man. It's all about them pre-save links, okay? Um, but you're going on tour soon. Where can we find you at, Trey Lewis, other than TikTok? At Trey Lewis Music, everywhere. Dot com? Dot, uh, just, you know, all socials, at Trey Lewis Music. You can go to my website, treylewismusic.com. Website. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, uh, the good old IG, Apple Music, yeah. Spotify. Link for the spicy site. I'm just kidding. No, you have a spicy? <laughs> I should, but I don't. Oh, my God. You know how many times people ask me if I have a spicy site? Yeah. I'd be like, dude, I'd be a freaking millionaire if you I would. had a spicy site. You would. Yeah, but my granddaddy and granddaddy. Yeah, I just couldn't do it. I you know? couldn't do it. Like, go by the name of Mike like, Concho, spread your butter part <laughs> and stuff. Head honcho? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Concho, Talladega Nights. <laughs> 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 oh, I just like to keep the people guessing, you know? Yeah. Get you yeah. some. <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough, dude. Thank you. We're about to go make some funny content Let's do after it. this. And thank take- y'all for watching. Nice to meet y'all. We're, we're going to go take some pictures. Peace out. We good? All right. Time to twerk and show the twerk running it. man. Oh, do you want me to twerk on camera? Yeah. No, why I'm not? just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Until next time, thank you guys so much for just hanging out with us live here at the Hooch House. Bye, Hoochies. All right. Go twerk.